What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 16 of Spoiler Alert. I'm Chan Man V, and he's Elohim. He's in my diction. Hi. <laughs> it's Chan Man V and two bearded guys. Two bearded guys. Going at it too. again. Oh, two very I tired bearded guys. Oh, yeah. And a tired, not bearded guy, too. <laughs> <laughs> tired, not, we're all tired. One of these oh, episodes, you should you should wear a fake beard to like round oh, it out. God, make draw, it. Draw there's in. probably people out there with OCD that watch and they're like, I just can't. There's two beards, there's one not beard, and I just. I know. Really. Exactly mm, right. mm, I have to cover that one up with my hand the whole time. <laughs> 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 I'll have to do that one of these days. I I, I did have it kind of long, maybe a few days ago, but it was just like well, look, just look a goatee. Look at the growing goatee. now. Look at that one. It's it's uh it's really yeah. coming. No, I'm oh, just kidding. Yeah, I don't right. see anything. I can't grow anything <laughs> right here. I can grow Not nothing. A, wow, right here. that's savage. Nothing dude. right here. <laughs> do you like? Do you grow in patches or is it, can you grow? No, like I literally cannot beard? grow anything here. It's probably just because I I don't you know I haven't you know done the whole shaving like your peach fuzz over and over and over and you know until it comes out you know basically super yeah people forced. always say like every I time i look it up online they're always like if you shave your hair it doesn't come back thicker and blacker like that's a that's a you know a lie that's a myth Is but it? i'm telling I you what it, yeah that's what, they, what that's what they that's what the internet would have you believe like doctors would have you believe this and like scientists Damn the press. and stuff but Damn I, the press. Yeah, this is one of the <laughs> This is one of the few things that I'm like, no, fuck the doctor, fuck the scientist. I know for sure this happens. Because, like, the only reason I had this holy crazy beard, which I could, could have probably grown it anyways, was because I thought it was, like, grown up and cool when I was, like, 13 to shave, like, to shave, right? So I would shave my whole face. Like, I didn't even care. Like, even if there was only a little something. <laughs> and now it's like, I can't stop it. I'm 31. My hair should be falling out. But it's not. It's growing rapidly on my face. So I really you, think I really think past the point of no return. That's actually what, what I just I just honestly I just think especially with women, I think if they shave like a spot, I think it comes back thicker and, and black. I think you can tell on women more. I could be wrong. Yeah, those mustaches I, I, on the women, man. It's really crazy. I'm not I'm not a scientist, but I'm I'm pretty sure <laughs> that I've done my research on this. <laughs> I'm no anthropologist, but uh... <laughs> I haven't gone through the scientific method properly on this one, but I would say <laughs> that'd be awesome. One, one side of your face as is like me, and the other side of your face is like like you with your full grown beard. Maybe if I have oh, a son, I'm awesome. just gonna have I'm just gonna have him shave one side of his face every day and see if there's any difference. <laughs> that'd be so like, cruel, man. Like my son's a beard experiment. <laughs> that's, that's what I use my son for. I love how this is the conversation. Yes, we're exactly. Well, guys, Chandler, why don't you, why don't you, yeah, why don't you tell them what the show's all about? It's not beards. <laughs> yes, it's totally about beards. No, guys, this is spoiler alert. What we do is we talk about our, uh, I don't know, just whatever TV show or movie that is, you know, maybe maybe hot right now, or just we, we want to discuss it because it's really really cool. Uh, and it could be anime, it could be comics, it could be just anything that's going, any type of media that's going on. This week we chose The Expanse, which is a sci-fi TV series. Uh, one of the rare, or actually one of the few sci-fi series right currently on TV. But it that isn't like just about time travel or some right, bullshit. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's old school, you know, traveling. <laughs> Loose sci-fi, I call those. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so we decided to do this one. It, it's uh, season one of The Expanse, 10 episodes. And Addiction suggested it last week. So, yeah, that's what we were doing. So we're going to talk about it, and then you guys can uh, jump in, you know, call in by joining this Discord channel, which um, Monkey Overlord will be uh, moderate or uh, vetting for us just to make sure you guys aren't trolls or anything like that. If you've read the books, please call in. If oh we, yes, we've please. got some questions. Yeah, we, need the, we need people who've read. But the don't book. tell us. Don't tell us what's going to happen in season two or anything. <laughs> that's right, like, that's right. yeah. yeah, I know that. I know for a fact that season one covers. People told me it covers one third of the first book of eight books. So, oh wow! Okay, I didn't realize. Yeah, that. and a That's lot cool. fucking happens too. So those books must be fucking dense, man. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, this, yeah, like like we said uh, earlier before the show, um, I feel like with this show specifically, I would I would want to read it. Usually, when mm -hmm. it becomes when it becomes like universe building stuff, which is what this is become you like know literally, like literally yeah, universe building literally <laughs> universe building you know like like uh yeah i need i need detail like i need 
100% attention to it and I need to like be able to read it. And yeah. like whenever I read, I like sometimes I'll go, okay, I didn't understand that. I need to read that again. And I'll go back over it, you know, yeah. like double yeah, read yeah. things because there's a lot going on with this show. There's a whole fucking yeah. lot. It start. it's like, it becomes well, so many different things in the first season. Well, um, I mean, first off, they just, this is one of these, these TV series where, they just jump right in. Like, they literally give you no background right from the start. Well, no, that, there's, yeah, like, there's... I mean, the beginning starts with that, the scroll text of, like, oh, okay. where humanity is now. Like, it... Like, I got that. Like, that That was not hard to grasp. It was just, like... Yeah. Um, mostly, for me, it was the politics stuff. Yeah, the stuff exactly. with Earth and Mars. Like, the the, 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 the... Like, I forget her name. The, the character that, that fucking tortured the dude. And she's, like, really ruthless and just, like, fucking... She's, like, the House of Cards character, basically. Um, yeah. her stuff, her stuff was the hardest to follow, but that's because oh, Christian, you mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. The... They were just like, they would just throw names out there. And I like, I just didn't know people's names right off the bat. And I didn't realize they were talking about, uh, fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, Holden, uh, Holden, Holden. Jim Holden the whole time. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. when he went to, when she goes to Montana, I didn't know that was his mom until the very right. end of that sequence. <laughs> I, when they were like, I thought Jim. I was the only person. And I was like, oh, oh, oh my no, God. No, no, yeah. no okay, dude, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. I, I went, I was like, oh wait, that's his mom. Honestly, I don't like, even think, I don't think it's a fault on the show. I think it's a fault on us for not, just not paying attention. <laughs> I mean, like as yeah, involved but, as we should have been. Yeah, Cause but, I went to the show not expecting it to be like a game of Thrones, like expansive fucking narrative with tons of characters that are connected in different ways and stuff. I thought it was going to be like Firefly or every episode's like a different adventure with a, this right. crew of people, you know, or something. I and so. there's a little bit of Firefly in there, which I love. There's a lot of, a lot of like, you know, swashbuckling adventure in space stuff, but like there's also yeah. political intrigue, a fucking neo-noir murder mystery with a de hard-nosed detective, you know, like yeah. um, lots of little stories about like that reminded me of uh, yeah. Total Recall, like the people that are in the fucking like the bowels of Mars that are like slave workers and shit. And they're like trying to revolt against the system. So there's like a lot of shit happening. A lot of shit. Yeah, really a lot of comparisons shit. I didn't even think of. Like, yeah, I, see, like going too. through, but you're right. Uh, going through, I mean, obviously it, it's like, it's like somebody got sick from eating too much, like Battlestar Galactica, Firefly. <laughs> and like, and then like threw up the expanse. Like yeah. it's, 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 it starts out one way and then it ends an entirely different way. And you, and you're right. It's amazing how many like little, little like, like, like genres and sci-fi. Uh, I, I don't know how else to say it. Like little, like, like niches, how they all come together into this one big show. That's why we were talking about how big the universe is, why it would be good to read this as opposed to watching it is because of stuff like that. Like there's a lot going on. It is very game of Thrones. Um, yeah, that's true. Go, go ahead. Go I was going to say, like, I'm actually glad that you you pointed that out, like, um, Nick, about just, you know, just the names, right? And I, I think you're right on with all those comparisons. It's just like, like, me too. I didn't think of it. I didn't really think of those things. And then even like the names, like, they weren't just very forefront to me. And I don't know. I feel like if it happened to you guys too, I thought it was just me, and it was just like, eh, maybe this just isn't like it's, resonating it's with, with me with, as it's as easier much. with the Game of Thrones because names have like deeper meaning like there's families the targaryens you know like yeah. the lannisters so yeah. when people mention someone's last name you're like oh okay they're connected in this way like yeah. whereas this this show no one's really related to each other they're just they're people in the verse basically you know but that's an issue yeah, right? and, for, and, I mean, from a, and from a and from a bunch issue. of different backgrounds yeah and i agree i think i yeah. think and and I was kind of the same way as Chin. When I first got into it, I thought, man, I'm an idiot. I'm the only one who's going <laughs> to jump into the show. I was <laughs> like, oh, my I God. Told, this is going to be a bad I told I told them me. before the show went live. I was like, I was like, guys, you might have to carry me a little bit through this one <laughs> because I'm not sure that I followed things as well as I as I could have or should have. And and then Chan's like, no, 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 man. I felt the same way. And then Diction's kind of like, ah, you know, a little bit, too. I. I don't want to pin that 100 percent on us on us if it's all three of us. Yeah. So I'm gonna say that the show yeah. maybe could have done a better job of uh, ex explaining things or maybe making things more obvious. There's a lot. There's so much going on. Exactly. I can imagine, especially since you said that like the first book was. It's like half of the first book is the first season, like and there's like eight books. Like 
yeah yeah like a third of it you know like you can tell there's a there's a lot to this and it's gonna get even crazier and crazier and crazier and like the and thing I, is though like they already established in the first season that they can totally do flashbacks like they can flash back to th things that you haven't seen yet, like with uh with Julia, you know, like the whole season yeah, is right. based around what right. the fuck happened to her, and in that, that last episode, we finally get to see exactly the, the 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 events that unfolded for her before we got to that part where she was trapped in the uh in the 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 Scolio, what was the name of the ship that she was in Sca that has the bioreactor with the fucking Sca alien ship, Anubis, yeah. Anubis actually An was no, no Anubis. she took the Anubis, <laughs> she took the Anubis. <laughs> back to the state no she's the on the anubis but then she on the leaves anubis, on right. the anubis a and, and goes yeah, on the, the, the lifeboat the lifeboat yeah. right okay. no, but the people yeah, from the sca scipulo or whatever comes on to the yeah yeah exactly. yeah yeah that's what i'm saying like all these like scapula, yeah, scapula. Yeah, scapula. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I, I don't There's actually a... i don't actually mind that portion you know with the girl it's just the main you know like the main storyline with the main characters that that's well, yeah no what i'm saying yeah exactly but like even even that stuff like they 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 have an opportunity to like in season two go back and flesh him out a little more like even jim like there's there's something with his history that his yeah, mom exactly. touches on that would be really interesting to know like why why he left earth you know like he and uh he and uh uh miller uh that's his name right tom jane's character and they're at the elevator and they have yeah. the radiation poison he asked him like why would you ever leave earth like it like you know what rain feels like or tastes like and he's just like uh, everything I knew there was always dying or something like that. So there's yeah. like there's something going on with his backstory that I think is really well, he's got like eight parents, right? Like he's got yeah, yeah. eight separate parents and the, <laughs> his crazy. mom, the one that had the scene actually was his actually gave birth to him. So she considers her, him like her son. Right. But it was over a land. It was like to protect land. Yeah, they did like a week. on Montana. Right. And so there's like, there, again, there's a lot about the show that like, I'm still kind of going like, what's going on with that? Uh, and that was one of them was what exactly what kind of history does does, you know, Holden come from? And I think obviously we're going to get more into it in season two cool. or three or sure. whatever. And so and so I'm not I'm not holding it against the show that they that they, you know, keep secrets. But it makes it really confusing, like for scenes like when she goes and talks to his mom, you know, like I didn't I didn't realize that it was his mom for most of the scene. And then, you know, yeah. like then you realize towards like the end of it and you have to rewatch the scene again it's, and be like, oh, exactly. About, like, I mean, there were definitely oh. episodes I had to rewatch just to like clarify it to myself. And you know, it's funny because we always complain about I mean, we don't always complain, but sometimes we complain about series or movies that just try to jam as much as they can into the first series. And then it just ruins just the possible explanation or, ex or um, expansion of some of the backgrounds, right? Or we're waiting for some of the backgrounds. And I think with this series, it was like the opposite. You know, they, they kind of just went into it, even though there are some things missing that we don't, you know, don't have the backgrounds where the book probably explains it better. But this one, I feel like they created the series knowing that they were going to have more series in, in the future. You know, like they, like, they, they had a lot of stuff to work yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. So. I mean, so they, they took like a snapshot maybe of, of a point that wasn't starting at the beginning and, and they just went with it. But it sounds like it's very true to the book and that they knew that they would be able to have some time to explain you know like maybe fill in the gaps and and do yeah, that. So yeah. I, I do appreciate that aspect of the series it, it didn't feel dumbed down yeah like it didn't feel that, dumbed like that's, down that's, at all. that's that i respect that like they could have totally gone the easy way with everyone just exposition exposition just like telling you exactly like my favorite scene was when um miller's going to to eros and he's on that fucking you know that like transport ship and the Mormon guy starts talking to him. Right. They strike up a very yeah. natural conversation. And then in that conversation, it continues to be natural. You get this backstory of where the Mormon church is in this new future. And they have they have this plan to take a ship out to the outer reaches of our solar system and hopefully meet God and stuff. And the way they presented that information, I'm sure in the book, my, may, I'm not, I mean, I'm not sure, but like I can imagine it being just like a paragraph where it just explains to the reader what's going on with the Mormon church. But in the show, they did it in like a, a, a dialogue exchange that felt supernatural and realistic. And I appreciated that. And it was like, oh, cool, more fucking lore. Like, I like this lore. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. did a lot of that. Like a lot of like, especially like the uh, all the zero, the zero G babies and the low gravity right. babies that grow up right. to be fucking like seven feet tall and their bones are brittle, brittle and they, right. they cannot handle Earth's atmosphere whatsoever and the gravity there and stuff. That stuff, the way they explained that, you know, was really cool. 
And, um, and then use it I as just, torture. And they use it as torture. <laughs> they just true. put you on Earth. <laughs> they just put you on yeah. fucking Earth, dude. And that's your torture. That sucked, man. That I was they like, just, they just hang you on a coat rack. And you just yeah. <laughs> that's so fucked up, man. <laughs> so let's go over some basics here. Okay. okay. Yeah. First, okay. So so we've got we've okay. I just want to clarify. So we've got <laughs> Earth, and we've got Mars. All right. Yeah. And then we've got the belters. OK, the belt. Yeah. the belt, the belt. OK, so so the people on the belt are basically like low income, like your your worker types. Right. OK, they're your like hard labor. They're the people that are going to go around like, you know, building and fixing things, basically. And they live in a in kind of a, a bad situation where there's a lot of poverty, so they can't really leave. And they're kind of stuck out there, right? Is that about it, it's kind of like it's a really, really stark allegory of of our world. So, like Earth and Luna are America. It's run by the <laughs> UN. Like it's run okay. by the UN yeah, and everything. Okay. Yeah. Mars is Russia. Clearly, clearly, <laughs> it's the red planet. They're independent. They're totalitarian. They're fucking. They have completely opposite beliefs of 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 the US, i.e., Earth. And they're almost at war. And then the belt is the fucking the 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 blue collar working class that's just caught in the middle of this bullshit. And they have to the only way they can survive is by keeping Earth and Mars happy, basically. And and their rebellion is the OPA, correct? Yeah, outer yes. Outer Planet Alliance, I believe it's called. Okay, okay yes, yeah. that's what I think it was too. Okay, I just keep I just want to make sure that I'm following along <laughs> as well as everybody else because <laughs> because a lot of times they're like, oh, this person's OPA, this person's OPA, are they OPA or the OPA? And I'm like, what the fuck is the OPA? <laughs> and I had to like stop and be like, okay, I need to focus on what the hell is happening here. Uh, like several times then I, I, I picked up that the OPA is obviously, you know, the Belchers kind of like rebelling and all that good stuff, but they're, they're man, rebelling, it, but it's just like, I wasn't clear as to what they wanted. Like, do they want independence? They want, they do want they independence. Want, yeah. They, I mean, it wasn't, they it, want it to be able to while, work for themselves like. and not just give earth and Mars all the fucking resources, resources they're yeah. mining for basically. Mm. Cause they get the scraps essentially. They get, I think they, they get the ice right from like asteroids and shit, and that that's water is like a really high resource. And then their their water is like basically what's left over once they're done breaking apart the ice and giving it to the to, to Earth and everything. Is I what think, I, I think water is the main was. resource, right? That that's how the entire series starts off talking about. Just a lot of the yeah. tension is about water. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there also seems to be lots of alcohol on the belt. Like every episode, <laughs> yeah. there's like people yeah. in bars getting <laughs> drunk yeah. and shit. Like, yeah, yeah it's no because they don't have water, so they're like, "Fuck it, we're just gonna make booze. It's easier." Yeah, they make they make booze in Battlestar Galactica. If they can make it in Battlestar Galactica, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> you can make a sill on a on a station. <laughs> um. The, okay. So so hold on. See, there was something I was gonna ask. Okay. So how? Okay. Here's what I want to know, and I don't know if this is ever explained in the show. Maybe I missed it. How did Mars and Earth, or like, how long has it been since we've colonized Mars? Like, why are Mars and Earth so disjointed? Like, I think there's a uh, lot I, of questions that I have about, like, why Earth and Mars aren't working together, well, and how they're so against each other, and they're well, and like no, they, they're so they, tense. They explained it in over the course of the first like three episodes, especially once they get uh, captured by the Mars cruiser. Okay. And the Mar and that Martian guy starts talking to, to uh, Holden about, like you know, you grew up with fresh air. I grew up under a fucking dome my whole life. So and like they talked about how they're still trying to terraform Mars, and it's not going well because they need water. They need ice to terraform it to build an atmosphere. So I think um, what the conflict is is that Earth gets most of the ice and the water because they're the ones that built all the ships and the and the stations that are there to mine it. And then they had already called. They already. I think they, it's been a long time since they colonized Mars. There's like whole generations have grown up there, I believe. Um, and I think Mars is getting like the fucking shitty end of the deal. Like they they get like a, a lower cut of the resources in the galaxy. So that's and the, and they need them more because Earth has fucking seventy five percent water on its planet, you know, <laughs> and Mars has none. So, so, so I think that's what their their big issue is: is they want they want more of the cut. That's but it like, seems like their tech is so much more advanced, like because they, true, yeah. Have, yeah. they have Mars to like somehow. And that's not really, I think, ever explained either. Is it because Mars had some kind of different alloys or, you know, uh, you know, resources that Earth didn't have and therefore it allowed them to 
technology beyond Earth? Because it gave me the sense that Mars was ahead t- uh, technically. Then yeah, I felt the same when it way. comes to to ships and you know they're always like oh it's Martian. Well, you think that until they they really they reveal that that the stealth ship that was blowing up uh, and trying to say the Earth. war was from Earth secretly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they yeah, actually yeah. do have better tech. They're just holding it back for it's like the stealth bomber. You know, we didn't know about that until like like they would do test runs. People thought it were UFOs for a while, and then the U.S. was like, okay, we have a stealth bomber. It's yeah. it's really silent and cool. Yeah, it was just it was just kind of I don't know. I feel like the show maybe could have done a I know it's got a huge universe to explain and I like the pace that it kept us on and I like some of the ideas that's being presented to me. I just wish I knew a little bit more than I than I yeah. than I do. I wish I was I wish I felt a little bit more confident about what I watched and yeah. understanding yeah. that from the show. I one thing I do love about it, about it though is I love the idea of whenever you think like sci-fi you always think like like humans versus aliens you know like earth is in peril yeah. or earthlings or humans in some form are having to deal with all of the problems outside in the universe that yeah. are usually aliens or whatever you know um whatever other thing they may run into but you hardly ever think of a expanded colony you know a a colonized mars that actually could be the enemy of earth it's like no it's almost like a civil war right it's like uh, instead of the north and south now we're just you know earth and mars battling it out against each other when there and there's really kind of no mention of of any extraterrestrial uh you know beings at yeah, all. they even it's like, like but they're and like they of. call Mars people Martians and Earthlings, yeah. Yeah. you know, and stuff. So it's like we're it's like they're, they're in this pseudo- universe, they are alien to each other. Like they don't know Martians don't know what it's like to live on Earth or even experience grass or fresh air or like fresh water and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And so then and at the same time, Earthlings don't know what it's like to live in those conditions under a dome, you know. So it's it's a lot of it's a lot, there's a lot of like uh like there's a lot of uh, connections to our uh, what's going on on Earth. You know, like I don't know what's going on in Syria right now. I have no frame of reference, and so it's kind of like the same thing. Like they Earth has no frame of reference of even what the Belters are going through. You know, and like they're like they don't like. A lot, I bet a lot of Earthlings in this don't even think about the fucking zero G babies that are that grow up with the brittle, brittle bones and they can't like they they can't handle like high enough gra- uh, gravity you know at certain points like their their body will just collapse that, on them and shit yeah that, that actually yeah. makes them a different being in some ways right it's like yeah, yeah so def- there's yeah I, you're right i mean there's this kind of hybrid like they're they're this, they're same i guess genetically they're the same but in in reality they're actually becoming different life forms and uh, yeah. that's a pretty that's a pretty interesting concept there yeah and you, i really and, and, you don't you don't like I'm just saying like you don't run into that very often though in sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah where true. the <laughs> enemy isn't some something else. I mean, except for like maybe Firefly. Firefly has the, you know, has the alliance that's colonized a bunch of places and there's other, you know, planets outside okay. of the, you know, alliance controlled. There's, you know, there there's plenty of that and they do, you know, go back and forth. So, it exists. I'm just saying it, it it's it's strange the way they've done it because usually in those universes it's like a bunch of different planets you know it's like there's always some like fringe planet that the hero or the (laughs) anti-hero can escape to that's you know on the on the edge outside of alliance control kind of stuff but it's really like just these two planets and it's it's crazy to think that like one day we could be battling Mars and it's just us well, just on Mars. You know, like it's very strange. I mean, they're not, but but that's what it's all kind of I, up Yeah, to. my favorite thing about this is like it's hard sci-fi, which I love, and it's hard to do. And it just felt like immediately in the first like episode, that's when I like just I told you guys like we gotta watch this. I just felt it felt lived in. The world felt like like super authentic, like whenever they're walking through that bazaar and the guy was fucking screaming about the OPA and the microphone right. thing and stuff. It just felt like a real place. And that's what I liked about it. Like there's a lot of sci-fi shows that just like they come off hokey and forest and everything. It didn't feel like that. It felt like everyone who was acting in it, like understood the lore. Like they had read the books. They knew what they were talking about. And it just felt super all right. the set design and the, and the, and even the CG was really fucking impressive. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. That just like, I also really we got to talk about the how they treated um, space travel and like zero G gravity and stuff yeah. and 
like the the physics of it and all that. I thought that was they did it so well. It was fucking fascinating. Yeah, the I world. Love I, that I, so much. Yeah, I think the galaxy and the world they did an awesome job at, at really portraying it and portraying it in a real way. Like we can we can imagine maybe this is what things are going to be like, you know, in a couple hundred years yeah. or whatever. Um, but one question I do want to ask you guys is that you know we're talking about how like this is a bit parallel of maybe what's going on now with Russia and us, but we keep talking about like. The U.S. is Earth and stuff, but who's the bad guy in this series right now? <laughs> That's the question. Because it's a Donald, shit Trump. Of... <laughs> Donald... <laughs> Donald Trump as a Middle Eastern woman, a Middle Eastern woman. It's 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 all it's all gray area. It's kind of like yeah, cause... you can sympathize with all of like you definitely sympathize with the Belters. They're living in shitty conditions. The Martians, where they're you know like they've been colonized for decades and they still don't have a leg up as far as like actual like living you know experience um i don't know they most all the stuff that takes place on earth is just from the point of view of the un so it's kind of hard to sympathize with them because they're the ones that are fucking controlling everything essentially um i want to know what's going on on luna on on the moon i want to i want to explore that because they never go to the yeah that's true they never go to the moon now opening sequence that it's entirely colonized the entire moon has lights all over it and like stations and stuff. <laughs> That's cool. I've always wondered uh, that too. It's like, why, why are we always so focused on Mars when we, you know, we could because it's we could it's put our a dome closest on moon. planet. It's got an atmosphere ish. It's got gravity similar to ours. Like it's 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 a it's a planet we could totally walk on the surface of. Yeah. Unlike you know, like Jupiter or some shit, which is just nothing but storms that will kill you in a second. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like the moon. You, you think we would practice? You know, like, we'd practice with some kind of smaller dome on the moon and 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 do phase one of of colonizing. You know, a new a, planet and that sort of thing. Talk to Elon there's Musk. Like, I know, I know, right? Yeah, exactly. there's a lot. You Elon, think... why are you doing Mars so fast? <laughs> there's a lot you think would happen with space but if there's if this show's taught me anything is that space is fucking scary okay it is. Like, like so, so every, why are we going like getting, way out there we could just be going like right here everybody's getting into shit it's like every situation they get into is dire and it's almost <laughs> always because they're in space yeah <laughs> like, like i've I mean, I've seen like at least two people just floating around out there in this show. Like, <laughs> There's still that kid, that direction. nephew out there. That yeah, poor kid. Oh God! Somebody will I find you. <laughs> Somebody will find you. While I, you know, really, really, Uncle. <laughs> just, you know, like, it, did, it, it did seem like it was pretty easy for ships to contact each other and 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 interdict each other. Like they had like a whole system in place where you can see the trajectory of where a ship's going, and then you can just intercept them pretty simply you say inner dick but then like <laughs> inter- 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 well that's what it's called in, no that's, that's what it's called in uh in elite dangerous when you're like flying in hyperspace you can be interdicted where someone's like they someone basically pulls you out of hyperspace and then tries to like fuck with you and grab your gear and shit Huh, I've never heard that term. I, I, I wonder what interdicted what the that is a, that. a very like great, great I'm gonna term. interdict guy man I'm gonna... <laughs> that's that's funny <laughs> oh, I love man. that that word out. No, it's it's an, it's insane how how big the universe is and how much they didn't talk about and how much there is to explore. Yeah. Um, and I think, like I said, ultimately, I think they did a good job with it. But I wish it's like it's like we understand the universe kind of, but I I wish they would have added some some extra details or maybe did things at least a little differently so it wasn't it wasn't so ambiguous or confusing uh when you're watching the show it's like it teeters right it teeters on just like it, it's, yeah, it's entertaining yeah. and good enough and i think as far as a sci-fi show it was on sci-fi channel right yeah it's on the sci-fi channel like it's it's coming from sci-fi channel i think it's incredibly good you know like especially coming from there because you know as far as sci-fi channel is concerned <laughs> i don't really see a lot of really great sci-fi I shows agree. coming out of there you yeah. know like out of every like 20 shows there's like one show that's actually pretty good and this is like every Battlestar galactica essentially yeah, like, fucking, yeah, it's netflix it. has picked it up right you know so um it's only probably gonna benefit from that but i, I it's a, it's a huge universe and i can imagine that people at sci-fi were tackling a a a huge project when they went into it and i think they did very well so i want to make sure that i say that before i say yeah. i wish they would have been a little bit clearer about some of these things because that's one of the hardest things to do in film is is when you have such a big 
giant universe in in text it's a lot easier to explain oh yeah well, you just straight up write out what you're trying to tell the the, the reader you know yeah like, it doesn't yeah. Even have to the be pro, poetic I mean, or anything exactly you can do a back you can do an entire chapter of just background and then kind of go into the action like those uh, yeah. um you guys ever read american psycho the book yeah no yeah the bits that you've yeah. seen the movie though right yes the bits where he's talking about music you know like mm -hmm. like like phil collins and stuff in the mm -hmm. book those are entire chapters. <laughs> they are of of just completely disconnected from the actual story of of him just explaining his love for these like musicians and stuff. So it's like, well, you that's, understand that's, his that's totally stuff you can do with a universe like this, where you just like do yeah. a whole chapter on the history of Mars and yeah. just say like it's from an excerpt from you know like a historian's catalog of of Martian history, something like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's like insane. footnotes it's and in, shit, you know. <laughs> it's insane the scope of it, though. Like, it really is insane the scope of it, and for for sci-fi to tackle something with that kind of scope, even though it's you know sci-fi. I, mean, I don't know. I in the end, like it's very packed. Like, there's a lot. There's a fucking yeah. lot. Like, if if somebody came up to me and was like, "You have to create this show," I would be like fuck me <laughs> like, I feel like i don't see, even know where to thing. begin like, i don't think they knew they were gonna have a, a second season like they weren't guaranteed a second season from sci-fi or, or any place but they treated it as if they were going to have it so it, it, it's like it's a good and bad thing because it is a tv show in the end and you know there has to be some you know at times we, we always want to be hipster and we don't like like you know what we've seen in the past and, and redone and whatnot but, but even the fact that we couldn't tell who the good guys were, you know, like, the, I think there was supposed to be a twist. At least if you, if you look at the general arc of what the TV show was supposed to be, we were supposed to be like, oh, the, so the, the self ship was actually Earth and they blew up the Canterbury and, and all that stuff, right? But yeah. I didn't really feel like, oh, okay, so the good guys are bad guys now. I, I had no feelings of yeah, that at all. Yeah, and that's another yeah. thing. This, this show doesn't, it doesn't present good guys or bad guys. Yeah. It gives you characters, and it gives yeah. you choices that the, these entities or these people have made. And and a lot, and that's one thing I can really, I can celebrate it uh, quite a bit because, you know, maybe not understanding who is good and who is bad isn't isn't the, the point, you know, and it isn't really, yeah. the, it isn't really, I don't know, important even because everybody's fucked up in the show. Everybody's got yeah. something that but they Holden, did that's fucked Holden up. Holden starts off. Holden starts off. I mean, well, first zero G sex scene in the first episode. <laughs> that was awesome. awesome. Yeah, awesome. yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Awesome. best introduction of a character <laughs> ever. Um, yeah. But like his basically his introduction is making a huge mistake that gets fucking dozens of people killed. Yeah. And then we're with them for the rest of the season. And it's kind of like, it's not about a trust issue with him, like as an audience member, but it's like this guy's very it humanizes him. Like he made a fucking huge mistake and it's thrust him into this crazy narrative where he's like got no, he's got like very little choices of what to do. And now he has to be like the skipper of his fucking shit. And he's and pulled like, everybody else into the bullshit too. Yeah, he's like, pulling all these dudes that don't trust fault. him. Fully it shit. really it's is all, all fault. his fault. Like, well, it's all his fault, but in the end, I mean, I'm guessing that, you know, him discovering this or you know their their role in this entire story is going to be very pivotal to huge I imagine huge that, like, events yeah i imagine story. that well the bait for the the bait for that fucking attack on their ship was there mm -hmm. for a while so they were just the first ones to actually take the bait so if it wasn't yeah. him it would have been another fighter, exactly like like that would be like oh sos let's go save him and then boom blown up you know they just yeah. happen to escape. That's all. Yeah. I mean, it's... in the end, I actually don't know if it's a mistake. You know, it's a mistake for those 50 people that died on the canopy. People keep but... saying it was the right call. Yeah. Like, towards the end of the season, they're like, he made the right call. Like, he did the right thing. But I'm still not sure it was the right thing. Because in the end, it was it was an attempt to frame, you know, the, the Martians, right? Like, I mean, they were yeah, just yeah. trying to start a war. So, um, you know, he they were just they were the witnesses, right? The, that's why the Martians didn't or they were trying to preserve them. They're trying to let them ex or they wanted them to escape. And and um, they were the yeah. only ones with the truth. Exactly. They were the only people that actually knew what happened. So yeah. it, it, I think in the end, I wouldn't look at it as like, you know, he made a mistake, but it definitely is the trigger to just all these crazy events that we're seeing. You, but, you might you might not call it a mistake, but. If is there another word for mistake without it being a mistake? Like like <laughs> like like he was a told he accident. was given a happy <laughs> accident. <laughs> no, uh, I mean he did go against orders. I mean he he the the dude in charge, you know, told and here's the thing too is that 
he could have taken over control of the ship. He could have been the XO, right? Like yeah. they offered that to him and he's like, no, I don't want to do it. And then he made he made choices for the entire crew anyways. Yeah. Like it was kind of weird. Like, <coughs> it, but but it's explained later by, by his mom when it said, like, we raised him up to be a leader and then put him in a game he couldn't win. Like, that's kind of his whole story. It's like he yeah. he's a born leader because that's the way they these eight people have raised him or whatever. She says something like he thought the land needed him because it would die away if it wasn't right. for him. Well, like, they, they told made him, him into this. They yeah, they that. made him into this weird. And again, all that's not really explained, but I think it'll explain better why he made that decision and stuff. Because it's it's not necessarily a mistake, but he certainly went against orders. You know, like he, he certainly broke the rules in order to make this decision for everyone when this decision was already made, you know. And so it may not have been a mistake, but it was still a real fucked up shitty thing to do, even to the people on the ship, even if the, you know, the end game was to save these people and he had a big heart sure there's more to situations than just having a big heart and wanting to help people as we found <laughs> out you know yeah and yeah. Uh, and i can always applaud him for <clears throat> having you know the morals to hear that audio recording and not being able to walk away from trying to help people you know that's that's uh, admirable in in somebody but at the same time um it really wasn't his call it was really already decided and I I can see why everyone would be super pissed at him, even though he made the right call. He made the morally right call. I I I wouldn't fault any of those people for being fucking pissed that they're all in that shitty shitty situation <laughs> that really doesn't get any better ever for them. Like ever, there's only one scene I can think of where things aren't dire. It's like. I, I like I don't know the scene where uh, him and the the one chick are sitting in the bar at Tycho's or whatever, and they're having like a drink at the bar there. It's like this is the only part in the show where like things aren't fucking horrible, or <laughs> they're, they're not dying, or yeah, they're not gonna get shot, or like it's the like, air is not man. being sucked out of their <laughs> yeah. ship again. Yeah, um, <laughs> let's let's take a second. Let's let's veer off a little bit. I want to talk about the characters. I sure. I feel like I have a lot yeah. to say about individual characters as opposed to like maybe the whole show um sure. but i want to ask you guys what what were did you feel like there was any characters that you just absolutely gravitated towards like anybody that you were like yeah he's my favorite or she's my favorite or there anybody like that that you guys really felt connected to? I, I like i like tom jane's character yeah, the most because he's yeah. the most he's the most complex i feel like out of all of them yeah the detective like he's a dude he's a dude he's like he's trying to do the the, the the right thing but at the same time he does so, all the wrong thing like he's a murderer he's corrupt as fuck you know like but he hates the corruption at the same time and and like he's definitely got a weird cd past being like a street rat basically in the in the belt um so i thought he was the most compelling out of all the characters for sure yeah dude i could i could have saved that guy's life i could have saved that dude's life I'm like, you don't want everybody to treat you like shit and like you're a scumbag and everything. <laughs> cut your goddamn hair. Like, just cut That's your That's true. Hair. That was really just annoying. Cut like, your the hair. style thing, okay? The style so keep that hat on. Is different. Please but keep you, your hat on. Everyone thinks you're shady and seedy as shit because of your hair. That's it. It's just your hair. If you would shave your hair, you'd have so much more respectability. <laughs> but everyone so treats true. you like shit because you look crazy with that hair. Uh, I understood it was like, you know, uh, it's a, uh, you know, I'm on the bell kind of thing, whatever. Uh, it just, I don't know. Every time I saw it, I kind of went, <laughs> oh, I don't like that hair. It reminded me of uh, uh, Zorg from uh, from Fifth Element. Yes. <laughs> the yeah, plastic yeah, thing yeah, on the yeah, other yeah, side. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I have this oh weird mashup of him and Punisher. Because the the actor because the I see who Punisher. is Punisher too. Yeah, Punisher. yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. keep seeing Punisher and then like the Fifth <laughs> Element thing too. It's like every time I look at him, it's like I'm a I'm a sad dude. It's yeah. like, oh come on, you're not that sad. You're the Punisher. Exactly. <laughs> like, you, you love doing this. You the love the status of the mall. His family was murdered. Come on, man. Well, I mean, I got, <laughs> well, like, like here's here's the thing. Is like that's sad for two seconds, and the rest of it, he, he seems to be enjoying himself. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. No, that's, that's true. That's that is true, I, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, he doesn't enjoy it. Like, yeah, my family, they all died. Oh well, my as well kill and everyone. Now I get to yeah, kill everybody basically. Blow um, shit up, blow shit up in the face, uh, in the shape of a skull. 
Uh, yeah, no, so with, but um, yeah, with the characters, it's like there's not that many characters that, at least at this moment, that they've showed very much depth in. You know, definitely Miller, you know, Holden, you know, as it's gone on a little bit more. But the others are definitely supporting actors. Maybe, maybe Christian, you know, the the um, the woman on Earth, you know, just the leader on Earth or whatever. She yeah. she's got some complexity. I mean, she's definitely kind of an evil character. I think uh, at least the way that they've they've portrayed her. But everybody else right now is just supporting. Um, I do like the God. I don't, what's his name? Who's the the brawn guy that's basically on the ship? Um, uh, Amos. Amos. Yeah. I kind of yeah, I like that guy actually. I, I think there's I do. I yeah, do there's too. something I behind too. him that I think they're going to probably go into some some of the story. Wait, which which too. character? Sorry, I was the the, 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 the muscle the muscle guy the muscle guy. Oh yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. boy. No, nah, is, he's, wait, is he is he uh, pretty boy? I, I guess the one I, the one uh, I, the, I guess. uh Amos right? Amos. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess he's pretty boy. Dude, he's dreamy as fuck. What are you talking about? Oh my what? god, I, I really big, big eyes, man. Wow, I don't know, man. He's, are are he's we thinking Ryan about the same guy? Are you thinking about the same Because the guy I'm talking about looks like uh, this guy. Here, I'll put, he, this he looks, guy. He looks like Tiro from Battlestar. <laughs> you know, Chief. You know, Chief. Yes, you, you, yeah, you know he looks a little. Chairman? He looks a little bit. He like looks him. a lot he looks a like him. If you put both, in fact, when I first started watching, I was like, "Is that that actor?" Man, he looks younger in this. How does he look younger? And I was like, "Oh shit, it's a different actor altogether." I don't, Every time I see that dude, I think he looks like the guy from Battlestar. He looks like Chief from. He Battlestar. looks a little bit like him. I I didn't. Oh man, I didn't think he was a great. Let me see. This is the same. Guy. This is the right guy. Look, Dude, I mean, he looks good like, in that picture. Yeah, not, he does. Listen, I am <laughs> the older addiction, you know, like, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say pretty boy when it, like, like when I think pretty boy, I think about Holden, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. You mean Jon Snow of The Expanse? <laughs> <laughs> I seriously thought it was the same actor the first time he appeared. Like, he's here face. Dude, he looks so more like the dude from Twilight, And then I looked closer, man. and I was like, oh, shit, no, he just looks a lot like him. <laughs> He looks so like the other... wolf from Twilight more than he looks like Jon Snow to me. Oh, oh, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Taylor Lautner. Yeah, Taylor Lautner. No. Yeah. 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 Maybe the bit. eyes a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he actually the eye. To me, he looked like the dude. He had, and this guy was actually in Battlestar too for a brief stint. Uh, he was the. This is the best way I'm going to describe this. He was the dude they used, the actor they used for the character in the Force, Un uh, the Force Unleashed video game. Um, I forget his name. He's in he's in sci-fi stuff. He's like almost always like a supporting person. Uh, but if you see the picture of him, I God, I wish I remember his name. Maybe somebody in chat can help us out. But well, there is he playing the expanse. Are, are we talking about he's in the expanse or he's not? He he is in the expanse. Or he's not in the expanse. I'm sorry, he's not oh, okay. in the expanse. He's in Battlestar for a little bit. He's like he's the guy that goes crazy on the planet and tries to kill oh, Kaylee. Right, uh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I forget his name, but he looks a little bit like that guy to me. Uh, I gotta find out who this <laughs> oh, is. God. I Porsche <laughs> Unleashed actor. I love this. I love that we have to find people who look yeah. like these actors. Hey, man, we gotta we gotta do what we gotta do. <laughs> is that it? Uh, anyway. Can we talk? Can we talk for a second about Sa how... Sam Whitner or Whitwer? Look up Sam Whitwer. It looks exactly like this dude. Sam, like all right, all right. Whit come on. Okay, let me see. This guy looks pretty much like. Oh him. yeah, he was in the uh, he was in the mist. Okay, yeah, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. kind of. Yeah. You yeah. see that? Like, there's a there's a bunch of people who have like faces that look like other people. In it's this funny show. how talk? other people see other like. Yeah, I know. We know. Like, I always we obviously talk see for a second about how Adam Jensen like. showed up in the show, like at the end there, and apparently he's gonna be a big part of it. Who's that? Adam Elias Elias Tufexis is the guy that stowaways on their ship when they're going on the, the rescue mission. He's the he plays Adam Jensen in fucking Wait, Deus Ex. The spy guy? The spy with the eye. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thing, the okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, that's him. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah he, he gets like I didn't really like I them, like I, I heard him talk. Like he's he said like several lines of dialogue, and I was like, fuck, where do I know him from? Steve, and then he said something that was really distinctly gravelly, and I was like, holy fuck, it's Adam Jensen. See, I didn't. I, I didn't really even know. I never played. I never played that before. Oh, you never, yeah. you never played it. Oh. No, I never played it. So I, you I, know I, the line though. I never asked for this. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But like, <laughs> I, I, I get so excited. Apparently, well, I mean, obviously, big things are happening to him because he gets fucking pulled into the goddamn uh, 
amorphous blob at the end there. Yeah, yeah. He has, he's two becoming names. A... He has two names in the in IMDb. His his name is hold on. Uh, it's Kenzo, and his other name is the Hybrid. So I'm thinking he's going to come back as some sort of like super, super monster. Being, like yeah. A, yeah, yeah, that that's exciting, dude. It's I... very, and that's another thing we didn't mention. But Stranger Things. This thing has a uh, has like Stranger it does. Things. It's got a little bit of a vibe. Yeah. yeah, I know what yeah, you mean. Like, like bubbling up, all you know, kind of alien material and shit. Like, yeah, like, infected. I mean, when I first saw the girl infected, I thought, "Oh my god, it's Barb!" Like that's it's what Barb. I thought. <laughs> it's shitty, stupid Barb, and she's it's back Barb. from her dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to it's ruin Barb. her good Poor time Barb. and parties again. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad she didn't become an like internet a goddamn, sensation. A goddamn beer shot or whatever. Your parents didn't even care that you left. Like, like <laughs> move on. Get out oh, of our lives. Oh no. Uh, yeah, there was. There's like also um, wait. Julia's dad was the dude who's in the Dharma Initiative and lost. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yes, realize it until right. he spoke at the that's end of right. the episode. And he said something. I was like, holy fuck! It's the Dharma Initiative guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the first one you see in the video and yeah. the reel where he's like, "Hello, my name is blah blah. This is the Dharma." I guess we should have put two and two together with with her and her dead father. Like, we should have known that the earth, you know, the at least some of the leaders on Earth were were up to no good. If Julia I didn't, rebelled, I, thought, against I knew her father. it was shady shit. I didn't know it was so shady where yeah. he was like basically sacrificing his fucking daughter. Yep. For some biomechanical, like, like, uh, alien, like, disease shit to, like, still not sure what they're trying to do with it. It seems like they're trying to use it to create an alternate, um, power source so they don't have to rely on ice as much or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it could be. It could be. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah. it's still kind of confusing right now exactly what the, what the end game is with all of that. But yeah, yeah. with that scene where he's like, oh, she's dead, he's like, good yeah. like, he's basically like good on that's to face all. too didn't he have like Stop. a tear didn't he have any kind of tear on his like like tracks of he tears did look on? emotional but at the same some. time he looked like he was like i did the right thing he was like yeah like this was all it's, part of the plan i get it i mean it wasn't like what a father would normally react whenever finding out like, his yeah. daughter became a i mean I she was know. kind of a bitch to him right she was like a rebellious teenager well, she's, yeah, she, but you she got her. Just, she's extra <laughs> she dead now. Yeah. She's extra dead now. She yeah. brought you to listen. That was some. That was a <laughs> fucked up corpse, man. Like that was really good. Yeah, she's got a freaking Make giant her crystal her. in her mouth and stuff. I, I do yeah, have to say that I was, up. I was shocked they had killed her off like that. I, I you yeah, know, I was they like, well, that's, that's why I liked it. I was like, oh shit, we don't really get to know the full story yet. Like we don't get to hear her story, but we get to see it a little bit. You know, um, yeah, the Miller was like, oh. I believe in her and you know making her out to be you know something like a cause or, or something much greater and then you know the shock of him seeing her just yeah. in the shower that's just completely i like they went that way instead of making her like the fucking river character from firefly where she's like the answer to everything and right. she's like a the one you know like you a messiah character or something we, we, yeah. we've yeah we've explored that uh well some of us not enough we some of us want more Firefly. <laughs> yeah, we all do. I think, yeah, we I think, all, we all want I think everybody Firefly. wants more fire, Firefly. Uh, but I mean, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm, I again, not surprisingly, love how gritty the show is. They didn't really pull punches when it came to killing people or even there maiming. Some, dude, people. there was dude. some fucked up death. The best on-screen death. Uh, this is one of the best I've ever seen anywhere. My favorite was scene. the medic getting his. Oh, head that was my favorite off. scene. That's and my then favorite. The scene blood the gets sucked out of yeah. the vacuum. <laughs> yeah. and it's just oh, like yeah. Yeah. oh my god! Yeah. That's yeah. He's, he's I was like, I jumped joint. up my fucking couch. <laughs> I was like, that is fucking awesome. Dude, like I, I missed that, that character cool. already, but that's still fucking cool. I, I was cheering. <laughs> that was my I favorite. Was been, like, cheering over here, and the reason I was cheering is because I have for one thing that has always bothered me about sci-fi. Uh, like like space battles and everything is like nobody dies to bullets or debris from like these ships. You yeah, get these yeah. massive giant battleships, right? And you have to think about the context of space as well. An explosion in space isn't affected by gravity. Those pieces and those those shards of metal and everything are flying through the atmosphere at breakneck speeds. You know, like these things can could be. If, you know they could hurt things pierce that you but you never see anybody die to this stuff now i don't remember it i didn't i couldn't tell if it was just a random piece of debris flying it's super high it speed. might have been it might have or been one of the bullets like the shots, one of the shots yeah. i think i think it was one of the shots, shots is what yeah. it was but the thing is is i like, thank god finally a show shows 
people on the ship getting hit by this shit you know yeah. like like because you never see it it's always like it's always to damage the ship so that people get in space you know get in escape pods or whatever it always shows like the damage of the ship it never shows the damage that it does to the people uh inside of the ship and so when that happened it was so it went you know hear that 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 sound that metal sound that you know almost like a like a it was almost it was kind of a weird sound it's almost like a flump but it was also kind of a metallic flump you know yeah yeah like it was kind of a suction kind of thing it was weird and then i went oh crap somebody got hit and then it's like that's what i'm thinking in my head i'm like oh somebody finally got hit and it shows his neck and the blood just going up through <laughs> and I, i'm just like oh well, they, well, no, but they, I mean, they show the reaction. They show like the joint flying across the, the screen and the guy like seeing it and about to grab it. And then he kind of looks past it and then his face is like completely yeah, shocked. Man. And then yeah. they show that. That, that was thing. like really well edited. That was really that was, like, well. Yeah, that was my favorite scene. I love yeah. it. And then, yeah, and, then, I love and then when they, they patch it and then the gravity goes right and then the blood the was all over No, there was something that was pulled like up out of his body too because i think there were like like little tubes and stuff coming from the top of his body too. there was like chunks been. of, of person there's coming definitely down. stuff like <laughs> that was some tdma shit right there yeah that was sure. pretty good <laughs> that was pretty interesting no but yeah, generally no, that... speaking i think i i did like the fact that they were they presented that right off the bat that anybody could die because i mean i i wish they would have killed jay hernandez's character too um you know because when they you know those those mobsters or whatever just grabbed him oh, and they just impaled like, him with the impaled him on, on the wall yeah. like i was like yeah. oh they, wow they, this guy was, died i think too? that was like a, a nice way of establishing that like med medical care is like way more advanced in the future and you can get impaled by a rod in your sternum and still they can they can patch you up because yeah. like later on they get fucking straight radiation broadcast on their fucking faces and they're dying of radiation poisoning but then once they get in the ship they have that fucking thing in their arm that can actually like cure them it's purified the radiation. They're, they're, so it's yeah. like so that was like that's what set it up for me i was like okay they got radiation poisoning they're dying but that dude like survived an impalement to the fucking yeah. chest it, it was all the way through his body i'm pretty sure they can there's a way they can fi fix this you know i was disappointed yeah. when he was at you know when he ended up living from that because I, I don't know i like the fact that you know it has that game of thrones feel to it like if you didn't read the books anybody could die at any moment so you know, you're at the edge of your your seat anytime there's peril going yeah, on, going on around the, these Game characters. Of Thrones, they kind of overdid it. Once they realized that was their hook, they kind of like it got to the point where it was like, okay, now everyone has to die. Or so you know, like, well, like, like I, I don't know. I just felt like that was the atmosphere in that. I don't in this. Like, I I, I get what you're saying because Chan. <clears throat> whenever I saw that death, I thought, oh shit, like this is gonna be good. I wasn't expecting yeah. that. I thought right, for yeah. sure he was dead, and I was a little disappointed when he was alive. Like, I, I don't know. I don't think it's a necessarily like anything wrong with the show. Like, I'm no, fine no, with no, that. No, I think no, it was just, just a choice. You know, it was just a choice. But I was a little disappointed that he, he wasn't killed because I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's the Game of Thrones thing. Well, I mean, from there I think on. It's just, I think it's just the, the anyone, especially in a world. And we got to talk about the technology, too, a little bit. Because, because yeah. you know, like, is anybody really dead? Is the girl even really dead? I mean, they're, they're their tech kind of borderlines on the magical you know in like a lot of ways like like the radiation thing like what is you have you have technology that can unliquify your fucking insides from radiation <laughs> you know like just like you get what i'm everything. saying like yeah. like it, oh i just put a little patch on here and suddenly i'm not coughing up my fucking lungs like yeah like you know like there's a lot even it the, definitely the has limits though because it. because they, they like they can't fix the people that were born in zero gravity yeah. Like there's like clearly those people are fucked for life. That's their bone or maybe structure. They that's not, them. Like, or maybe they can and they just can't afford it. Remember? That's true. Remember, they don't have uh, health care. <laughs> that's that's right because what's his name had said that his he had to let his uh, his sister die because they didn't they had too many mouths to feed and they were starving. Right? He said yeah, it, right. It, he said it was hard for us because we had no money. But he made a point to, to be like we were poor, so we couldn't get any help for her. Like and so Girl. I think that probably if you have enough money. These problems aren't problems anymore. Yeah, but they all couldn't the fix the medic. Are... Someone said in chat can't fix the medic. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, you can't. I mean, no, you that, can't fix the not medic. Not coming back what from the, that, dude. 
But the that's medic true. didn't fix anyone either. <laughs> that that's, medic, yeah, that's exactly. like, yeah. medic. I love that that he wasn't even a real medic. Like he was like he didn't even a know fake what to, medic guy. He didn't, he didn't, know say, he didn't save the pilot though when they were losing oxygen. Like he, he, he improvised. There. Like it was like one. Yeah, but moment that's not like finally... a medic. I mean, like I think no, that was like that was simple that. CPR and exactly. shit. Like... Yeah, I love. He's like he's he's like. So what do I do? They're like you're the medic. Fucking figure it out. Like that's your job. And he's like, oh, that's happened a couple times the show just figure it out why are you asking yeah. me yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah like don't you have a fucking job to do i i love the medic I, i'm sad that he died i thought he was a really cool character in fact he was one of the few characters i was really like, kind of getting behind like i like yeah. this guy this medic who's not a medic that's kind of uh like the comic relief that can like lose his cool but also do cool shit you know like he was kind of all over the place he was kind of a geek you know and uh and i liked him but then he, then he was gone you know what i don't like though that fucking pilot's accent, that cowboy accent they try to it's put It's really, on yeah, it's really hard to place. But then again, exactly. so is, um, what's his name? The, uh, the the leader of the OPA, the guy from Mad Men, Jared Harris's character, is like, there are a lot of accents that are really hard to place, and I feel like they're made up for the show because, you know, like, it's so far to the future that, like, there's a lot of, like, like racial mixing and stuff, and there's, like, there's yeah. A, yeah. clearly a different... Like, especially in the belt, like, there's that whole fucking visual, like, sign language that the guy was trying to learn from the prostitute. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like there's, like, a, like, almost a different, like, it's kind of like, um, the, 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 the French accent, in, like, a Cajun accent, you know, where right. it's like a little a bit mixture. of French, a little mixture bit of Southern, like, it's a mixture of things. So yeah. that's, that's where I, I think that his accent is, a, is like, he, he just grew up in, in an area where there was like this weird kind of southern tinge a little bit. And I and I and I like that. Like I, I can I can get behind something like that. The the guy who just... looks Indian is talking like a cowboy. I'm fine with that. But his it's like it's like they went up to him and he's like, What's my inspiration? And they're like, just talk like you think the marble the, the marble guy or what's it? Mar <laughs> uh, Marble Man. Marble. Marble yeah, Man. Marble Man. Yeah. Just talk like you think he would talk. And he's like, Okay. So that's like how he sounds the entire yeah, we're, time. We're, we're pulling like out, like, yeah. It's, yes, we're. It's not, we're even, taking it's not off. even like southern. It's just cowboy. Like it's just like a like a cool guy accent. Like I don't know if we're gonna do this today, guys. Like he could be in Starcraft or something. Like he's basically Rainer from Starcraft. Like that's oh, what his voice sounds like. And it's and it's it's weird. <sighs> and and uh, sometimes like I'm okay with it, but I don't feel I don't feel like he pulls it off well at all. I'm okay with the idea that this guy has a cowboyish accent and he's, you know, it's different because it's a different universe and stuff like that. But I don't think he pulls it off very well. I think I keep, I, I think it's grating to me, in fact. Like every time he talks, I'm like, ugh, like, God, we get uh, it. You're like so overselling it to me. I don't have I don't that know. much problems with that guy. The, the person that I, I just cringe every time she's on the screen is, is the, the Christian character. The, yeah, I don't. I didn't uh, really I just can't like her either. Her. Like, I can't even understand her very well sometimes. Like, to be honest, I had to rewatch. He's talking about the the, the, the leader on House of Cards, lady. Yeah, the House of Cards. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's it's like, it's, it's oh. hard to watch House of Cards and then watch this. You're like, where's Kevin? And they should have just had Kevin Spacey. <laughs> this person. No, but she's. I don't know. Oh. It's like she's the one, probably the only character that I'm like, oh my god, she's. I like she, I liked either, her character, but her accent was really thick, and it was it's kind of like watching Hannibal and trying to understand Mads Mikkelsen when he's talking yeah, about these fucking it's, complex psychological shit and big words. It's like okay. yeah, so I I don't know if it's because of of that kind of you know English barrier or whatever it is, but it's like sometimes she feels like she's overacting too, like that she's definitely the the person, the actor at least, not not necessarily the character, but the actor that I felt like. It just was not the best. She was definitely the worst, in my opinion, because I could tell. Like I felt like she was, like acting, trying to be this, and it wasn't even necessarily good, half the time. I don't think yeah. any of the acting was necessarily spectacular, except for maybe, except for maybe uh, Amos. Yeah, I really, I liked, I really liked Amos. Yeah, he was really good. Was really good. That's why I like him so it's much. Funny because he's like the Jane figure, right? You know, like from from Firefly, he's kind of he's supposed to be like the brute, and they they even make assumptions about him quite often. Like that one guy was like, you know, oh, I can tell what kind of person you are. You 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 know, like you hit first and like ask questions later, kind of thing. Like yeah, you don't yeah. think, but it's actually not true. He's no, actually yeah. really intelligent, and he's actually, I mean, he's muscle. 
but he's also got a lot of street smarts. He's got he he probably outwardly more than anybody else seems like he is keeping up with what's happening and like trying to figure things out and is actively thinking about it, making choices, making yeah. decisions. Like there, he's not just looking at at holding for answers like a lot of the other guys right like he's making up his own decision that's why they're clashing you know that's why butting heads all the time uh but yeah, he knows who he I, is he's kind yeah, he of know, yeah. knows who he is the only the only yeah. little weakness that he had was the girl right because yeah. you know he he's obviously i want to know what's the beginning with that because he follows her. her orders every time without question and it's like it doesn't seem like a military thing it honestly kind of seems like a mind control thing. I don't know, but it's mind just like I thought it was just literally. a romantic thing. I didn't. Think I, I a, did I get think a little bit of romantic a... from it, but then, but then he had the uh, he had that dude at the bar come up to him, and he was just like not interested. But you could tell he was like, I don't know, I don't know if he's like bi bisexual or something, but he's mm, definitely. And then he like he okay, said he, okay. he used to do yeah. stuff for money, and he's not ashamed of it and and stuff like that. But like, oh, I don't, I didn't, I, don't I forgot about said. that. Yeah, no, okay. I didn't know. The guy came up, and he said not interested, and they told the guy that. Be careful that other that other dude eyeing him because he had a knife on his side. No, but he and, did allude to something in his past. And he, he said, yeah, when he was talking to the pilot, he said that he when he was growing up, um, he had to do stuff like that. He had to hook essentially. It was like what he was getting at. Really? See, I didn't pick. I up believe so. Yeah, I, I, I thought he was just saying that he was good in these types of environments because he grew up in them. Like he recognized that dude had a knife or oh, that okay. dude's knife because. He's used to these kind of places. That's why he was. I, able to, that's like, what I originally thought too. But I felt like there was a little bit more to it. Like where where Diction's going with it. Um, but my immediate response is the same thing. It's just like okay, he's just used to this these, this type of environment and town. You know, maybe he grew. He said he grew up in these kind of clubs and stuff, right? He said something like that. And yeah. um, so I don't know. I mean, maybe he would did hook a little bit, but he, he was definitely but comfortable there. Yeah, to back up a little bit though, I don't think that the the acting like across the scale, like across all the actors yeah. in the show, like the show of the expanse is not something I would be like, you have yeah. to watch it because the acting is <laughs> exactly insane. yeah. I, yeah. Agree with that. I, I it's think serviceable. I think, uh, it, they do their jobs. Yeah, but yeah I mean Holden was even really, just like really the story, so, the setting, and the fucking like the cinematography is really beautiful too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I love the camera work and the set design. Like it's it's just like the acting works. And it's it does its job. Like they all yeah. do their job. Well, it doesn't excel. That's not it why. You, it's yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's exactly. not an overachiever. It's a it's a C plus student. You know. Like <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like that's pretty much what it is. And some are better than others. You know, obviously it's always the case. But um, uh, I think in this show, I think I think more of them. I think there there were more actors that were mediocre, by far, than were good um and you know it, like i said it's coming from sci-fi so your expectations i think are a bit lowered and i hate to say that because it, it sounds so bad but so cliche, don't you man. know don't you though man like like when it comes to sci-fi you're kind of like all right i'm not expecting you know expectations are always low with sci-fi except for like after they did battle starts like okay they're a yes. contender like they've got they've got they're actually taking risks here didn't they cancel it though after five seasons like yeah but we should. yeah well, I, what's I hate, it they lost it I hate having that that kind of expectations from sci-fi content. I mean, there should be good acting in sci-fi content too. Imagine how epic no, it would no, no, be. I'm not saying like, that there shouldn't be good. I'm just, just saying that you don't expect it. Like, I know, but yeah, I'm not God, expecting it's... everyone in this to be like Sam Rockwell and Moon or something. You know, or just <laughs> yeah. like a powerhouse performance. I don't want it to be good. I love Bruce Campbell. Like I wouldn't say he's a good <laughs> actor, right? Like, yeah, but he, I'm... but he's an actor that we enjoy, and not because he's good, but because he just brings a lot of personality to the character, you know. Yeah, uh, but he's funny like, though. That's that's different. I mean, he, he is it's not, funny. He's not. He's, he's a good actor because of that. No, you know? no, I would not say Bruce Campbell's a I mean, good actor. Well, <laughs> I would say he's an entertaining actor. I don't know. Have you seen well, Bubba actually, you're, right, you're right. You're right. I think I, I have seen him in things where he is definitely a lot better. But when you're thinking about sci-fi people. And you're thinking like, you know, shitty sci-fi actors. You think Bruce Campbell just because he's iconic. I'm, I'm not saying he's not good. I'm just saying like, as far as like Meisner trained, you know, like a method <laughs> actor, you know, like he's not, he's not I the mean, kind of guy you would go either. to. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, that's what I'm saying. That's just... I, we don't necessarily want sci-fi to have like the best actors. We want our Bruce Campbell's right. <laughs> but like, 
also, but in a show like this, that's so 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 serious. You get what I'm saying? It's such though, a diss to Bruce Campbell. That's why. That, that, that's it's so not, different no, than like no, no, these no, he's actors. Great. He's a good actor, but it's like yeah, he's not. Yeah. He's never gonna win an Oscar. Like he's exactly. Never, that's yeah, but exactly that's what I'm saying. like his best performance for me was Bubba Hotep where he played Elvis. Like an aging Elvis. <laughs> that was actually and like, yeah, was but good. it's still a silly movie where he fights a fucking mummy dressed as a cowboy. Like, <laughs> and so I, I mean, so ridiculous. So just I'm sorry, he... I don't mean to say. Listen, it, it... Chan, I, I've, I've obviously had a soft spot here. No, listen, it's just... talk to me, talk to me, buddy. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not attacking Bruce Campbell. I'm just saying when the Oscars are going out, his name doesn't get mentioned very often. That's all I'm saying, okay? And with good reason, because he does his niche thing which everyone loves and if he did anything different i think uh, i mean be, i'm not going to even get into the discussion it. of the oscars and and how that has to do with comedy <laughs> and everything all right <laughs> so you know yeah, it's, it's, i'm not going to even talk about that because i could talk about that for like <laughs> hours <laughs> So, so it, it's, you know, I'm just saying Bruce Campbell is a much better actor than any of these people in, in this show. It's, it's just I don't sad. know. Tom uh, Jane. See, you know, Tom Jane know. Thomas Jane is the only person that definitely is, is, is very talented. You see him in Boogie Nights, man. Yes, he fucking yes. stole every yes. scene he was okay. in. I, 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 and I, there was like 50 fucking actors in there. <laughs> rabble, rabble rouser number three really got me going on that rebellion. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Okay, so actually, one thing I want to remind folks is that hey, you guys can join our discussion like anytime uh, by just going to the Discord and talking to Monkey Overlord. Here's the the link. He'll talk to you, get you set up, and if you want to jump on the show with us, kind of tell us maybe some some points that we missed, or if you have any kind of question, feel free to do that. We'll be pulling on some callers if we do have any in, in the next I don't know five ten minutes if you guys are around. Um, you know, I did. I, I think that that scene where the guy loses his head and it starts going out, the, I think that was one of the best death scenes I've ever seen in a, in a yeah, show. Exa- yeah, like one of it the is. best. And I'm sure that I can and it's co- followed by list, it's followed by one of the best like um, what do you call it um, problem solving scenes in the show. Yeah, where they're like they're like working like like it felt like The Martian, you know, where they're like they're like step by step. Like, how do we solve this problem? We're losing air. We got to plug these holes. Blah blah blah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they didn't even talk, did they? Like they were just like they just kind of they had a shorthand. They knew exactly what they needed to do. Yeah. They're like I love them tossing the fucking thing across in the zero gravity. Like yeah, those, and then those throwing the gun to each but, other. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. But throwing that out there, I had some scenes I had some real issues with. And there's one scene in particular that every time I've seen it three times, I've watched it again just to be like, do I really hate this scene this much? And it's the scene where they're they're escaping and they're running across that that uh, bridge to get to. Oh, from the, the Mars thing. From, from like, the Mars, yeah. 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 From the Mars. And I, I, I think it's a cool scene, you know, them running, <laughs> escaping, shot at. whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it's the getting shot at thing. <laughs> it's like a million like, people shooting at them. There is a yeah. million people like shooting at them. Like there are sparks continually going off on the side of this thing. Like, like nonstop, like spark, 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 like all over the place. And like, ra- like even in slow motion, the sparks are going off all over the place. And no, one person got hit in the in in the leg, right? You know that one yeah. person. But then you've got the two of them, Holden and the chick, going across, and the 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 gravity goes low, and she flies out, and then he sets himself and pulls her back. During this whole thing, there are still gun, there's still gunfire going <laughs> off, and I'm just like, okay, I can suspend my belief at a certain you know, yeah, a certain place. But like it's a long scene. It's a long scene, and there are a lot of like like stormtroopers would have been making fun of those motherfuckers. <laughs> like stormtroopers would be like, "Look at these fucking idiots trying to hit a target." It's like they were aiming for the bridge. It's like they were like, <laughs> "Kill that bridge!" <laughs> the da, 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 yeah, yeah, and they've got like an explosive. <laughs> they've got like a rocket explosive, right? And they yeah. shoot it at the elevator for some reason. Like they don't even blow up the bridge for their escape. Like it's weird. The whole scene is weird, tactically, how many bullets yeah. are going off. And every time I watch it, I can't enjoy him doing that really cool maneuver, you know, in zero gravity to save her, basically, and get them right, yeah. you know, momentum-wise. Like, that was so cool, that idea. Well, did, well, and did they, they ever, oh, ever go into what happens to their guns in zero gravity? Like, how bullet trajectory is affected by that like well they didn't but there were still sparks going off everywhere if you why again i watched that scene specifically be like am i just being too critical but like maybe i am but at the same time like when they're shooting it there are spark. like it seems to have no effect like the zero uh, g is just I mean, like z- i mean zero g there should be no effect it should go straight like your bullets yeah. should just 
Yeah, straight. yeah. It should probably uh, yeah, go yeah. straighter and longer, faster. Exactly. Than it, would it should. It should. Shouldn't even be pulled <laughs> fact, down at all. Gun, guns get better in. Snow <laughs> exactly. Guns <laughs> get better. Perfect aim, man. Yeah, Snipers just, are ridiculous. You point and click at that point. No, no, but, no, uh, no it adjusting was, did the wind. You, you guys didn't notice that at all. It didn't. No, I know. I noticed all. it too. It's one of. I noticed it, but I accepted it because yeah. I've seen so many fucking action movies where that <laughs> shit happens, and I was just kind of like, it just like. I didn't care once they fucking got the gunship up, ship up and they just fucking went ham with the I, with yeah. the uh, yeah. the the mini guns like that. Just like I, that was like that sold the scene for me. I was like, all right, cool. That was badass as fuck. I'm good. I, I literally I, had that moment, Elo. Like literally, when I saw that this was about to happen, and it's always that classic. Hey guys, I'm just gonna fire a bunch of bullets out there, and then you can just run into the wide open, and you won't get hit by any of the bullets. That, you know, I'm covering <laughs> you guys, I'm totally covering you, and it's just like him, just yeah. like spraying. Like I, I knew that scene was coming. I'm like, oh boy, okay, I'm just gonna have to bear this. Like next few, you know, next few seconds. And like you said, it was a long scene. So it but, was a long. Yeah, it was, it was it one was of those scenes that, that you just accept. Having it's, to cross it's there, yeah. it's like a. It's got to be at least a five to ten minute long scene. Oh, I don't know about and, that long, but uh, dude, it's a good it's, couple it's a, minutes. It's a, three, two, three minutes. No, dude, it's got to be at least five minutes. It's great because two people go across. Anyways, yeah. uh, if it, it's fucking, it, it's it's too much. It's way too much. Like the bullet <laughs> spam is just way too much. Them not getting hit is way too much. That that whole scene was like, I'm like, okay, that's like like there was another movie with Bruce Willis. It was a war movie. Oh, uh, Tears Tears of the Sun. It's like it was one of those situations. One. If you if you've ever seen it, I think it's what it's called, Tears of the Sun. And it's like they have a whole guerrilla unit like shooting at them from all sides, and they're retreating through the jungle and like not getting hit at all, no matter what. And there's like a hundred plus people shooting. I believe in the force. It's like Rambo. The force is in me. I believe, <laughs> I believe in the force. The force. the force is in me. I believe in the force. That's what they're saying as yeah. they go across the bridge. No, it was <laughs> exactly. just so weird. It was just like. I get it. It's dramatic effect. They're getting shot at. Okay, is the miraculous whatever? But it's like, come on, man. That that scene bothered me. Out of I, any nothing else in the show bothered me, but that scene. That scene just it was just like, oh god, you're just, uh, this is bad. <laughs> it's just bad. But um, other than that, I thought I thought the scenes were really cool. Oh no, there was one other one other weird scene. Uh, when when he is in the airlock after he gets caught by the OPA people. And the dudes like throw him in the airlock and let him go. And the two people are looking at him oh, and then yeah. they get shot, you know, because the girl comes and saves him. Uh, there's a weird and now this might be a little nitpicky, but I didn't really, you know, like he's looking up and then the guy gets shot and the blood splatters in the ground, onto yeah. the thing. It makes no sense trajectory wise. Like the girl shot him in the back of the head. Why is the blood splattering below him onto the thing? Now, I know they wanted to make a cool scene. I get it. But like it makes it makes absolutely zero what do you sense. I mean, she just jumped from the fourth floor and came down like headshotting right on top of him. She now that would have made sense. Yeah, like like if he, she jumped over and then like or if she was on like a second level and yeah. shooting down at them. Okay, maybe. But like they're literally like it's like he's looking. Clearly, up, like, she wasn't though. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and it's, like when he gets shot, the blood splatters on top of it. It looked weird. I don't know. It's just little weird little inconsistencies that bothered me in this show. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I think they were standing those, right. Though, maybe maybe they were. They weren't crouched down, like looking at him, ready to watch. No, them no, kids they're throw standing. Him. Like, yeah, they're, they're standing. They're standing right? She okay. shoots okay. him from behind in sure. the head, and the in the blood somehow splatters. Yeah, splatters on the, on the glass. Yeah, it's... yeah. It looks. I, I understand they're going for a cool shot, but it looked kind of weird. Um, but like I said, this this show, I think the the word that I would describe this show as is intriguing. I think it's intriguing. I think there's a mm -hmm. lot of things yeah. that are going on that are worth our time and worth us investigating that it makes it worth keeping up with even if the even if the acting isn't terrible isn't great even if the acting's kind of mid-level uh i think it's where i think i'm i'm excited to go into season two and watch season two yeah. um because i just think there's there's a lot that needs to be answered here mm -hmm. oh by the way this is just my theory throwing this out there because we still don't we still don't know who the chick is right we, we can all i mean everybody can Wait, which pretty one? Much tell she's the the um i'm sorry i shouldn't really? say the chick. uh the the captain girl on their squad i keep oh naomi yeah oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She, naomi. Like, she has an opa background we haven't talked about yeah, her yeah, yeah. yeah it's like she's OPA, whatever background. here's my theory here's my theory is that holden's mother or those eight people that raised him or whatever probably just his mom sent people to keep an eye on him purposely maybe even multiples maybe even specifically just women because 
I hmm. I think that her being an operative of his mother's or of that group of people makes sense in the context. She's not OPA. She says over and over she's not OPA, and she looks really genuine about that. They think she's got a secret. Everyone thinks she's got a secret. She's always finding ways to make sure that she's near Holden and that she's doing like even when Holden wanted to go off on his own when they're in Tycho, mm, okay. you know, she finds a way to rally the crew to get behind him so she can go with him. She doesn't she she's it got a thing. It's it's almost like she has a thing for him, but she doesn't. It's it, like you want to think it's a romantic thing, but yeah, it, that's it, what it's weird because she kind of keeps her distance too. she keeps his secret about him uh you know changing course she knew before everybody else that would explain why she kept that her job in my opinion is to keep him safe and i think that she's sent by his his mom or that those eight people and this would explain the one girl with him on the on the barge too i think she might have been an operative too because she's like yeah. right before she dies she's like i i need to tell you something I, yeah i think she started mm -hmm. to maybe get feelings for him and and she had a job and afterwards she felt regret about it like she wanted to tell him about that either that or the only other thing i can really come up with unless there's some crazy story thing mm, that that's, she a, might good, have that's later, a pretty is, is she might have been pregnant theory yeah that could she might have been pregnant that's okay. the only other thing that i think that she could wow. want to tell him yeah before okay. she dies like that maybe she got pregnant when they were fucking i mean that, i mean seems out of left field but that's the only thing i can really think of the only other answer would lie in in the continuation of the show, obviously, you know, like maybe there's something really like she's OPA and blah, 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 and something much deeper. But with what the information that we're given, I truly think that there were there were people sent to keep an eye on on Holden specifically um, and maybe not to to get involved with him, but just kind of keep an eye from a distance, be a confidant, be a friend, support whatever and uh i think that's what her role is i think she's all too often getting close to him but not necessarily getting emotionally close to him and that'd be interesting distance yeah, yeah. That, i don't know that's, that's different... my theory i have no idea and people are the, have read the book probably you know no and are like oh Ella, i'm you're so dumb but like that's the only thing i can think of with those characters we haven't really talked about her much she's Did clear she, have a theory? she clearly uh, has like a, a, a long history though you know in opa or, or whatever i mean she knows like all these you know, little uh, breadcrumbs that, that they leave, you know, like in the city, you know, where she saw the map, you know, of where to go for the shaft and things like that. She definitely yeah. knows. I mean, even if she's not in the OPA, yeah, she knows Fred. like she's definitely, she knows a lot about them. She seems yes. to know Fred too, even though she says that she knows guys like Fred Johnson. She, she seems to know who he is too, or has had some kind of contact or relationship with him in the past. I hate that actor. I, I've actually I, I like him as a person. I've actually met him in real life. Oh, but really? As an actor, I don't Wait, I don't him. like him. Uh, oh, the guy he, he was in Walking Dead. He played a. Uh, oh, who's uh, he in the Expanse? Ty, Tyrone. He's a uh, he's he's the, Fred Johnson, the guy on Tycho. Yeah. Fred Johnson, the black, yeah. the black guy. Yeah. He he he's in Walking Dead. He's he's almost exactly right, 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 right. Yeah. Walking Dead. Like he, he just he doesn't. It almost act, it's like he doesn't ever act. He just is is there. He is there. Yeah. He just, okay. he's he there. Me is there. I liked his character and I liked that his like the service his character had of the story, but like I liked when he did the speech to like expose the earth and stuff. I felt because like, it was supposed to be this grandiose thing and yeah. he I like practiced that. it and shit. Other than that, he didn't blow me away. Yeah, it was just like yeah, was, it, it, it's job. that actor, man. I like everything I see him in, it's just very it's very it's like he's not willing to let himself go at all like in, in acting in anything he's always like very reserved like nothing he said is really said with much emotion it's always very even keel you know like yeah i don't know watch him in walking dead you'll see the same thing when he played tyrone i think it's tyrone or tyrese tyrese in walking dead uh you'll see he's like almost exactly the same um <laughs> but other than that i think it's, it's since we were having you know we were talking primarily about acting and stuff um i think that i think that uh he probably bothers me the most uh, acting wise, even more than that, than that woman. Um, but yeah, anywho, anywho, I, I, I want, I, I, what do you guys think is with the alien too? Like, is it an alien? Is it a created weapon? Like that's a whole, there's like a lot, man. There's a lot that we, we need to watch season two at some point. I mean, it's some, it's some kind of yeah. life force. 
right? It's I mean, definitely it's definitely it, alive in some yeah, sense. Yeah, is like, it definitely? It straight alive. up reached out and grabbed that fucking spy by the face. Like <laughs> that was pretty epic. It's got. It's I got liked that spy. I liked him. Yeah, yeah. I liked him too. He was. And they didn't ever give him a fucking break, man. I like, don't. Right, <laughs> right like the, like, and that scene we haven't even talked about donkey balls, man. Like that song. <laughs> donkey balls. Yeah. Yes. I really like that scene. Oh like the idea God. that there's like black ops people out there that if they say some fucking crazy codes like that like like let that's him, it him you just let them go yeah, exactly. you don't ask questions it's yeah. black ops you just get the fuck out of the way you know like that is super cool and uh i i i i felt like the guy really got him out of a tough situation like really helped yeah. him out and they still cut him like but then no he fucked slack. him over in the hotel he did well, which yeah, i love no, i love was that scene leave. with the fucking <laughs> shitty music and they're waiting in line and stuff and it's just like it felt so coen brothers like i yeah, love that yeah and then it just yeah. turns into a bloodbath that's oh, true like, oh, that, yeah. that was like your classic tarantino coen brother yeah it's scene. Right, yeah. Right the, uh, totally true romance it reminds me of true yeah. romance, like when things just go bad. You know, it's just things just go the worst. It's like you, you know, you're looking at this guy. Okay, you know they're about to get into a gunfight. They're like looking him? at each people, huh? Do you blame him for leaving? Because after after he no, he was supposed the to though. They made an agreement that once they find her, they would let him go. I mean, he and Holden had that no, agreement he, anyways. He called those the were, were those operatives. He knew that was going to happen. Like, he was aware that these guys were going to yeah, be He start. got the yeah. fuck out at the right time. Because he sure. was a spy. Like, he was spying specifically on Holden. Yep. By the, the UN the UN lady, like, sent him out there to fucking track they, him they, down. But they already him. had an agreement, though, that, you know, once they found the girl, they would take off. So the question is, is did he know anything about, you know, what was going on, particularly with the girl yeah, what, beforehand? What does because, he know? Yeah, like, why didn't he go up there? Like, why not just go up there? You already have the agreement that he, he just that you're going to let him go once you guys find the girl. So there was no reason for him to take off there unless he knew, like, like you no, said, maybe no. he called those like people. He said he, he called those yeah, people. they were black yeah. ops from the UN. So he knew they were going to be like, he, he tipped them off. That they're oh, going to be in the hotel. Right. Okay. Okay. That's why he but, booked but it. Cause he knew there's going to be a shootout, but can you blame him? You know, it's like after, after he saves their collective asses, uh, they still don't cut him any, any breaks. And yeah. the Amos guy is always breathing down his fucking neck. Like he's going to kill him. He's like, he tells him, he tells him, doesn't matter how this turns out, you're going to die and I'm going to be the one to kill you. And the guy's like, oh, it's just like that. He's like, like water's wet. Like, the, like, awesome. like you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that's how it is. Like, you're dead. And the guy's like, oh, it must be so nice to like have it all figured out like that. You know, like if, I, if I was this dude and I saved everybody's asses and then this guy was breathing down my neck, telling me he's gonna fucking kill me. Like water's wet and shit. Yeah. Like, like you know what I mean? Like I'm, I, like I don't hold it against that guy for turning on him and calling whatever operatives he needed to call because they were not being cool with him, man. They were not being cool, and I get it. <laughs> he's a spy, so you can't be cool with him. But at the same time, I don't, I don't hold any, I don't hold any, uh, any grudges against that one dude. Like I don't know, he's supposed to seem like Weasley and seedy and stuff. Like he's a spy, but to me, it was just like. I don't know. He seemed, he seemed to tell them the truth most of the time. He, he yeah, I didn't was, really see him deceiving them very often. It was never, you know, just out of feeling it was, it was like a confidant or anything. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, matter. Does it doesn't matter. Of course I mean, it matters. obviously, well, you have here's to trust what I'm the guy, saying is, right? is that like, I mean, well, you're not. I don't. You don't have to trust him. You don't have to have him like sipping coffee with you and give him his own room and bath and shit. Yeah, but but you, like. Like, why was he on like the ship to begin with? You know what I mean? Like, the, he already started w in this very, you know, shady, seedy scenario. Why we, they even found him in the first place? He was freaking broadcasting from their their ship. So, I um, mean, and he told them, he tells them straight up, really he's a, he's not a good spy thing to do. Like, yeah, you exactly. Known, right? Fucking no. I know, I know. Right? I mean, he seems like this really. A uh, really good and gifted spy, but yet he's like on their ship, just broadcasting on a channel that their cat, you know, whoever's well, piloting can pick it up. It's like he explained crazy. he was keeping tabs on Tycho, is what was happening. He and was, then he was, he was sending was, like he was he yeah, was yeah, sending yeah. out and, schematics and shit from from the ship for Tycho, and sure, he sure. his shit got it's got too hot there basically, and he had to make it out of there. He was going to get caught is basically what he said. And now, he was sending communications to his team to come pick him. Yeah, I remember. And, that. and, I and honestly, that. that may not even be untrue. That may all be very well true, and he could still be working for the UN people. You know, like that's why he was siphoning all that that information to begin with. Mm -hmm. You okay. know, like like they were keeping it because that that was the place they were building the giant uh, Mormon ship, right? 
Like that's that's what was happening there, right? Like they were building this giant ass ship for the Mormons, but the UN was like upset because it might have it might be a giant warship basically. So they were keeping eyes on, so they had operatives in there. So that's why that guy was in there, and then he had to leave because things got too it got too hot. Because remember the conversation that uh, Fred Johnson and the Mormon guy had. The Mormon guy tells him, "Hey, we're we're thinking about firing you," is what he tells him. And then he and then he goes, oh, well, that would be really that would be really bad because, you know, you wouldn't have, you know, all the safety experts that I have, basically. And who knows what could break when you're out there, you know, fly into wherever you're going, you know, all you Mormons, blah, 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 blah. Then he tells him, get off my station. Well, we have to do some sensory tests. You guys can come back afterwards. So basically what happened was the Mormons are like, hey, sorry, we're going to fire you. He was like, if you fire me, I'm going to fuck up your ship. In fact, get off of my fucking station. They're like, and then he's like, oh, we'll have to figure this out. So he leaves. So that tension's already building, right? With the Mormons and, and, and you know, yeah. OPA and all that stuff. And so then that spy is like, I got to get the fuck off of this, off of this rig. Like, I got to get yeah, out but of that, here. That spy was hired to follow Holden. Like, it, Do you it know wasn't... that though? Yeah. I mean, I don't Does know 100%, but they, re they refer to, you know, an informant, informant right? Just on yes. earth. And yeah. that has to be the informant. Who else would it be? Unless it's the girl. I mean, they, it could be the girl, I guess. You're right. It could be. I'm yeah. just I'm just saying that like it, it didn't seem like he was ever not telling them the truth. And I'm sure he maybe maybe was, or maybe he wasn't telling them everything. Maybe he was omitting, you know, like lying by omission. But it seemed like the things that he was telling them was dead on. And I think I do believe that they said something about fake black ops codes, though. I, I, I feel like somebody said something about fake black ops codes and I can't remember is... again, man. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a fucking lot. So maybe I don't know. I don't know what the fuck to think. I just felt like they were real dickish to that guy. And he said oh, they were asses, definitely a dickish to them. But at the same time, I don't think he necessarily was the most trustworthy. If anything, I think Holden was the coolest to him at, towards the end. Like, you know, he was at least, um, I don't, you know, at least honorable you know kind of like honor among thieves type of thing you know with him you know in, in agreeing that okay you know if you get if you get us there we'll let you go you know and, and like i promise you that you know and coming from him i think you know, given that he's the leader of the the pack of folks then you know they would have let him go but um mm -hmm. i don't know I, I for me it's just like you're right you know i mean generally speaking he was resourceful for them but at the same time he's just saving his own skin he was never doing it you know just for the sake of of having some good faith with a team or altruistic reasons. I mean, it was always because that would give him a better chance of just surviving. Like Diction was saying. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but why would they, why would they want Holden dead then? Why would they like set up a, a gunfight or like you and, you know, like the UN lady never wanted him dead. Yeah. So like, that's what UN I mean. Lady... Like, like he, if he set that up, he's just trying to get away. And it's just like, I, I, maybe he just didn't know what was actually up in the room. So maybe that, that outcome of him letting him go wasn't necessarily a hundred percent certain. So I he feel was, like, I, I don't know. I mean, no, the fact okay. that he called the black ops just already tells me that he wasn't that trustworthy already, you know, in terms of the yeah. group. So I don't know, man. that, that shit was confusing. For <laughs> it, me. It, was, that, it was, it was definitely. like, I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, I thought it was, I thought it was a very good show. Um, yeah, it was good. It, it, I think, I think it's definitely, in, I think it's definitely something for a certain specific type of person. Like, I don't think everybody's going to jump into the expanse and go, this is the great, <coughs> ever. you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's not like a Westworld type thing. But I I enjoy it just simply because I'm such a huge fan of Battlestar. I'm a huge fan of Firefly. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of like Stranger Things, all these shows that it really grabs from. Um, I, I kind of love all those things. So it made me feel that in a lot of different ways, especially that scene where they where they name the ship. That's like the crew scene, you know, like that's <laughs> like the firefly. We're now officially a crew and they did. And that's one thing I have to say. What did they is, name it? I don't remember that part. What, which, uh, the uh, the uh, Russ, Russ and 80 or Russ or something. I don't know. It's the name of whatever. Is that when they painted? Some significance. There was some significance there to okay. the name. Okay. It, it was the one uh, Holden suggests it. And then Amos is like, yeah, I grew up like with something oh his, okay uh, okay yeah I've, 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 so i remember decided. that now but but this the one thing the show does do probably better than anything else is uh ambiance like ambiance atmosphere of like a scene 
the the lenses they use and uh, like on um on the 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 uh the belter planets you know like that that almost like blue tent lens they use because it's like everything kind of is, is kind of morose and sad there like they build that that atmosphere when they name the ship there's this very palpable coming together of the crew like th this is solidifying it like these this is the ship it's almost like a like a star trek you know like the enterprise kind of thing it's like everybody you know like they name it and it shows everybody it's got like a nice little you know tune playing in the background you you feel the weight of it you know yeah, yeah. of the decision of them all coming together which was really cool there's a lot of scenes where they build up the atmosphere so well just through camera work and and uh and the acting the lighting all that stuff they just and the music too they can really pull they can really show the 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 heaviness mm -hmm. of 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 what's happening um pretty easily which is sometimes incredibly hard to do in film to show that kind of emotional impact and it not come off as like cheesy or corny yeah um agreed but yeah. uh, i think it did i think it did did that and did it in, in spades yeah i mean but, I, I know i know a lot of folks that watched the first season they, they've been waiting a a good a solid year for uh season two to come out because it, it, you know this wasn't again like confirmed or uh you know, they weren't signed on for a second season until i don't know maybe even like a few months ago but it, it apparently it's going to be starting up in a couple weeks so lots of oh yeah the uh, february february first right yeah so second, folks have been wait, waiting second season or the third season second, second season. season second season they literally waited over a year for this like oh i thought that the it. second season was already out no. no. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. really? So like, yeah, this okay. is the one and only season that we watched. Okay, I thought mm -hmm. that there were two seasons out. My bad. Mm -hmm. My bad. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of folks that excited about it. It's gonna be really, really cool. Definitely check that out. Uh, yeah. Did we have any callers? No callers today. Last chance for I folks. What I the guess. fuck? I know. God, <laughs> guys. Why no, they're all so just as confused as us. They're like, fuck this. Yeah, I'm not joking. Like, I, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure about stuff either. I probably <laughs> will read this book. I probably like Corey was already asking me if, if I wanted, you know, her to pick yeah, it up. Yeah, I'm pretty intrigued. Yeah, I'm, I'm at Google, least gonna read the first book. The <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alexa. Or Alexa, please order me. Please order me, you know, what you call it. Is well, it called The Expanse? The the books? Just the, like the series is called The Expanse? Um, or is it like book to book type of thing? The uh, it's called Leviathan Wakes is the first book. Oh, okay. It's the basis for the first season of The Expanse. Yeah. Wow. So, there's, so this is there's this so is many. kind of a stupid <laughs> question. So this is kind of a stupid question. But what's The Expanse? What is an Expanse? I know that. And I, 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 I forgot that I was going to ask you guys that, but in like, <laughs> like, like, like the expanse of up. space, like space is the expanding like the of void, space. The oh, the expanse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I rarely hear that. Like it, yeah. the universe is constantly expanding, so it's called the expanse. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just it. didn't feel like they did yeah. a lot of expansing, though. Like I didn't feel like they were really, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they weren't really. Okay. Did Ella just turn into a four-year-old? What just fucking happened? <laughs> <laughs> they were expansive. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, they're right. Like they they did expand to the outer. Or like into our so the expansion has already like, happened. That's as yeah. far as we've gone. The expanse like, is it, it, yeah, yeah. is the actual. It's currently yeah. happening. They should call it the post expand. <laughs> the, the post -expand. <laughs> I'm gonna get the Kindle version of the first book, and I'm gonna start reading that. Yeah, no, oh I don't. I don't. God. I get what you're saying, though. Like there was, I, like when you call it the expanse, I was thinking, like, okay, they're trying to, you know, colonize other planets, and then they run into some aliens or something, you know, like something like that. That's right. what I would think when you say the expanse, you know. Right. But there wasn't like it's like the expanse has already happened, like the whole going to Mars and you know the you know all that sh shit's already done. I guess now we're just like figuring out what else is out there in the universe or something. I yeah, don't, I don't yeah. Know. Expansioning. The expansioning. <laughs> the expansioning. All right. Thanks for clearing that up. I thought it was just like, oh, I mean, I've definitely heard the word expanse used. I just, I just ha had to clear that up. <laughs> it's a stupid question. Yeah, no, man. They're, we they're all got stupid questions sometimes. I mean, that's yeah, just man. Don't worry about it. You, yeah, you, you ask away. If you don't know a word, we can always look it up. <laughs> I make up my own regularly. <laughs> exactly. So. All right, well, so should I, we talk about next week then? Yeah, let's talk about now, next week. Okay, we're going old school this next is week. One that I, this is one that I picked. Yes, we're going old we school. we haven't done enough or like any anime. Yes. I don't and think we've done any. 
anime. We've done zero anime. We've only done one comic too. So yeah, like yeah. We, yeah. We, we we haven't done any anime. No, like none. I mean, wow. Kubo Kubo is like the closest thing, but that's not even. Yeah, anime. Kubo's the close ish. Something. No. Oh, I guess that was the Killing Joke. I guess that yeah. wasn't anime. That, that was, was just uh, comic animated. That was, com that was the only comic book we've done. Yeah. Well, I'll listen, this is what I think. I'll think of a, I'll think of a one volume comic book for the for the week after because we have two weeks because of PAX, right? I I can already so. think of one if you can't, but yeah, no, please do because we 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 we're supposed to be like games and all this other stuff, but man, well, we really is like, tough. We, games is actually games is tough. tough. You gotta find yeah. like a, a a solid like five hour long game See, or something. I, you know, I like, think that we I think that we could do an episode of this on the new season of Walking Dead Telltale. The new could. season. The, I've yeah. already done the first two episodes myself. Yeah, I've already done the I first done two episodes it, also. Man. Okay. See, I think that they're short. Can do you can do it, like the first two episodes took me an hour and a half. Both of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Together. They're not very like, long. Yeah. The first one seems real quick too, like real fast. But hmm. anyways, I was thinking if we're going to jump into anime, we have to do it right. We've got to jump in with like the most classic, the most amazing, like the most like the place that I start most people off. What's what's is, everybody think it is? And it, this, is there, good. Yeah, this is, so this is particularly guess, good for dude. me. I know. This is particularly Watch good for me, by the way. You all LO on like what real anime is. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just saying, I, I have a I have delved into the history of anime. I'm big Myzok fan, you know, all that shit. This is gonna be great. Anime because, watching. Because I but, I am literally an anime noob. And like, you know, one of the things when we were talking about like starting this show was that, you know, we were talking about the different things that we could discuss. And I, and you know, you guys obviously brought up anime. I'm like, anime, that's going to be great because, you know, I just ha never had time to really get into anime, even though I know I'd, I'd love it. It's just, I just haven't had time to really get a chance to watch everything and, and, you know, be, just have at least folks guide me through it, you know? So this is, yeah. this is going to be great. And this is more of like a, a history lesson than yeah, it is. Like, exactly. Like this isn't what I go with. This is the coolest. This is the best. You know, like you have to watch this. This is like this is what I would consider to be like your homework. This is like so you can appreciate everything else that comes after it. Like yeah. you have to watch this. All right. Here we not, go. I don't have chat up because it distracts me. So I don't know what people are saying. All right. Here we go. Here we go. No We're going to be doing. No I, somebody's close. already guessed once. It's. it's it's Akira, Akira, man. It's Akira. Akira is like, of course, Akira, 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 right? <laughs> Akira is uh, what, like back in the, what, 88? Like 88, the, yeah. I think 88. It was, was 88. Was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 88. Um, it's one of the most beautifully illustrated anime movies ever. It was back in a time where they really, really paid attention to detail in their art. Like you might watch like, okay, like I think probably one of the more sophisticated art wise that's come out, you know, recently, like maybe like One Punch Man, like like that kind of art is very intense, very, it, it's all encompassing. It's got explosions, you know, fast scenes, stuff like that. But Akira is different in the fact that like, it, it almost harkens back to, the idea that whatever you do in life you you do it as well as you can like you dedicate yourself to it and you can tell that the artists of this really had that philosophy went down if you go like scene to scene and go frame by frame some of these scenes where they're like huge cities exploding or like huge like uh mass of people getting blown up or bridges breaking stuff like that the attention to detail in the art is so exquisite and especially for its time that it just it has to be fucking talked about like it has to be mentioned because it's just so it's it's just everything that's beautiful about anime as far as the art style is concerned i feel like you can grab from akira the story you know we'll get into that and everything you know next week uh i don't think it's like the greatest story it's not like if you the most entertaining but if you're gonna have an appreciation for anime i think akira is a great place to start yeah so. i agree that's that's my that's my two cents. So um, I don't think there's an easy way to watch it. I think that you're probably I mean, there is an easy way. Not that I would ever, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> I would never say that there you should definitely support art in all of its forms and all that good you can, stuff. okay hey you can rent it on on streaming on on amazon for yeah. four bucks four dollars yes yeah. you can four dollars on amazon mm -hmm. and you know if 
You're 25th feeling... anniversary edition Blu-ray is eighteen dollars with Prime shipping. Okay. <laughs> if you're if you're feeling like you <laughs> want to visit the beach <laughs> and there's there's maybe a bay out there, but you're scared of some scallywags <laughs> showing up and attacking you. Maybe <laughs> I think if you, you get what I'm saying, you get. If you Ventures don't, you don't. Into, whatever. Venture into the character. I'm just saying. Yeah, whatever. exactly. But um, anyways, I'm excited. Uh, I think it's a good a good starting anime, and then we can get into some of the more fun, you yeah, know, that'd be cool, fun things and crazy things. But what's great is I, I haven't seen not. any of the re I haven't seen any of the recent ones, so I won't be, you know, I won't be jaded by by any of the most recent, even just maybe quality, you know, of of uh, just how anime is done these days versus. Like the old old style, because um, yeah. you know, because some folks might I don't know is Akira would Akira feel dated to a lot of people? Uh, no, and that's the thing is like okay, I feel like great. you can grab Akira. Maybe and maybe the audio, but like maybe, yeah, yeah like maybe visually, the audio, like, the colors may not be as vibrant. They're pretty as, washed out, but I think that was intentional. Yeah, I think I'm it was intentional. Sure it was intentional. Yeah, and that's huh. that's the thing is that like uh, if you watch this, in in my opinion. The art is way better than what you watch today. Oh, really? Like it's okay. just yeah. Like it's it, to me, it's way better. Like if you just look, like when you're watching it, just pay attention to the explosion. Pay attention to like the whole scene, all the intricacies of what is happening everywhere, and how that art is all going out, and like just little stuff, like somebody sneezing in the background or something. Like they pay attention to that. You watch, like if you watch Akira and then go watch like Sword Art Online. You'll tell the difference, and Sword yeah. Art's considered to be like a good anime, you know, recent anime, mm -hmm. uh, depending on who you ask. But like, no, I, I think honestly, like this and and like the uh, uh, Miyazaki films. Hope I'm saying that right. Um, yeah. Are yeah. probably the most beautiful anime, animated uh, Japanese animation that you'll you'll probably see. It was either this or Princess Mononoke, which is another really good one. Um, That's good. They have that kind of old school. Also, anyways, what's this? Uh, he died, but uh, he made Paprika. I see. I've never Paprika, seen Paprika, but I want to see. Paprika. It's, it's, it's uh, Satoshi Kon. Yeah, he has made. I think he he made before he died. He made for only like okay, let's see, one, six movies. Six Actually, movies. no, okay. no, three, four movies, and then um, two series. But his first one, the first one I ever saw was Perfect Blue, and that movie fucking blew me away. It's insane. Perfect blew you away. Perfect blew <laughs> me away, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. It's well, just, can, it's just, I don't know. It's one of these, it's, it's, I think it has to do with money, you know, like limit, you know, limited resources, a certain amount of time investors have to get out something in a, in a season now, you know, that kind of thing back in like the eighties with Japanese animation. I don't think it was that big of, I mean, obviously they wanted to make money, you know, and all that was still a factor, but I think they were allowed much more time, much more. Yeah. Um, um, the process was much more forgiving, you know, and so ultimately you get a much more uh, a beautiful piece uh, when, it, when it's finished, but we'll see it. We'll check it yeah. out. We'll talk cool. about it next week. And uh, for those of you who don't know the show, I know we said at the beginning, but your homework is to go watch Akira this week <laughs> join us next week. And then we will watch it same time, same bad time, same bad channel. Uh, maybe unless we decide to switch it up, we'll let you guys know, but it will likely be here. Um, and it'll be at 1, 1 p.m. next week yep. on Thursday. So come and yeah, join definitely us. Definitely tune in and be ready. If you guys want to jump on with us, you can. You know, that's a, that's the cool thing is we, we we do take callers through Discord. So uh, if you do want to jump on, be ready next week. But uh, why don't we wrap up? Diction, you want to do some shout outs? Where can people find you? Hi, I'm Eby Addiction one You can find me at twitch.tv slash <laughs> Addiction one I stream all sorts of games. I'm not sure what I'm streaming tonight, but it should be fun. Yay! Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm. 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 Guys, if you want to follow, you can follow right here on this channel. I'm Elaheim. Hi. Um. I. I got to be honest with you guys. Sunday. Uh. We had. Uh. Sort of a uh, family thing happen. We. Uh. I lost. I lost my uncle, and oh, uh, it was. Oh, yeah. It's really fucking tough. I don't mean to bring everybody down, but I've been kind of dealing with it a little bit and uh so i haven't i haven't streamed since i think like sunday or something i haven't streamed since then i just want to let you guys know that i'm dealing with that and i don't know i'm gonna try to stream tomorrow morning but it's kind of got me a little fucked up and i don't like it but it is what it is so um i'm not making any promises on tomorrow's stream but what i'm saying is that if i do stream we'll be here you guys are more than welcome to join us whenever i go live next but i don't know if it's going to be tomorrow i'm trying to get my shit in order but it's just 
it's just it's just a, it's just tough sweet, man so. definitely tough yeah you sorry anyways uh, uh, yeah chan at least we at least we got man. today <laughs> at least we had today yeah that's, that's yeah nice. i know yeah i, yeah. I yeah. yeah it's a lot easier when there's like other people hanging out we can just talk and just chill yeah and, yeah, so. yeah, yeah like a gotcha. hangout session than anything all right yeah. Chan, yeah. where can we find you, man? I just went. Well, you can find my stuff at everything ending in Chan Man V. So my stream, Twitch, uh, Twitch, obviously YouTube and and Twitter too. I uh, do all kinds of shows, shows like these, but pertaining to games like Hearthstone and Overwatch. So you can check all out all those vods, including the vods for this show on my YouTube channel. And um, we've done 15 other episodes of this, uh, various other movies. It's kind of cool watching the chat sometimes. I usually don't, but today I was a little watching a little bit more and. You know, people still haven't seen the show and they see the show for the first time. Like, what's the show about type of thing? Well, we've reviewed a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies, guys. It's probably some of the movies that you, some, maybe some of your favorite movies recently. So go and check those out. We've done lots of good episodes. Uh, but I want to thank you guys, obviously, for doing the show with me. Um, you can find the show also on iTunes if uh, you guys listen to things. And you can you can search for spoiler alerts, but we don't come up very high currently in the SEO. So if you can find us, Go and uh, leave us a review, a nice five star review. It'll help. It'll help our at least SEO in, in iTunes. Uh, but that's available there. It's also available on SoundCloud too, if you, you want to find that. And that's on uh, SoundCloud.com/slash/ChamanB also. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it though for this week, guys. So for E My Addiction, Elheim, and myself, Chamanv, we'll see you next week with Akira. Take it easy.